Um, hello, I'm Joey. You know, and yes, today once again we are traveling halfway around the world to an artist that we absolutely love. And uh, yeah, let me just introduce him. It's Phineas here on Asia Pop 40. Hello. Hey, how are you? Thanks for talking to me today. Of course. Uh, thanks for making the time. We have about 10 minutes. I'm gonna get to a lot of questions. I really want to find out about this new single. But first off, how are things over there? Things are good. I just got back from a dog walk. It's so hot in the mornings here um, that I kind of have like, I usually like wake up, have some coffee and then take my dog on a walk. But it's been just like, so hot lately that now I do it like after dinner. Um, what? But that's nice too. What's the average temperature in California right now? Um, I mean, I don't know what it is daily, but there was definitely a period like last week that it was like, um, like a hundred Fahrenheit. It was crazy. It was really hot. That is pretty crazy. Uh, and also, it's been a weird year for Cali, also for uh, where you are in the United States. Um, so, you know, this lead us right into the single. Uh, what they'll say about us is essentially, I'm guessing, a song inspired by 2020, by what's happened this year so far. Yeah, I mean, it definitely wouldn't have been written uh, without it. That's definitely the truth. Um, yeah, the two things that were the biggest influences on the song were back in June, I was going to uh, Black Lives Matter protests with my girlfriend and my sister, like running into friends there. And then I was coming home every night and I, I'd been following the story of uh, Nick Cordero, who was like a Broadway performer. And, um, and it was kind of those two things at the same time, like feeling very hopeful and inspired because of the protests and also just sort of being like, wow, it's crazy that we're all going through this yeah. pandemic why everything shut down and uh the chorus struck me because you say um, in a very slow like um progression that we've got the time to take the world and make it better than it ever was and that's what they'll say about us now i'm curious by us did you know what us is does it mean this generation my hope is this generation yeah that's yeah. that's what i was hoping for but i think it's it's anyone it's you know like you talking to your best friend and that's, you know, and how can we do the, the you know, the most we can. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's this generation being like my generation. And then I, I think even more so than my generation, to be honest, like kids that are like 18 mm -hmm. right now, just graduated high school. Like those, those kids are really inspiring me. And by the way, I love uh, the music video where you basically stare at the camera the whole yeah. entire way through and it's very candid it's very earnest um the uh the i suppose the message that i'm getting is that humanity is sometimes at its best in uh, in a place of despair would you would you agree with that um i don't know i mean i don't i don't know that i thought that deep into it i just like music videos to be like good visual representations to like accompany the song so mm -hmm. yeah I liked I like how colorful Sam the director uh, went with that video and I think it's like, like just really impactful and direct when when you you know have like a single shot you know there's not any edits and it's just like me talking directly to the person watching so yeah um, uh, that was kind of the you know the goal uh, by the way halfway through you were showered by raindrops or water um, yeah. poured on you but yeah, I don't know yeah. I'm sure you've noticed but about I think half a minute in to the song there's one yeah. single drop that got onto your head yeah. and there and it's just drooping down your forehead I couldn't take my eyes off that was that intended no of course not but I, I totally noticed that and I'm glad you picked up on it you know basically there was this like it was really inventively done. I, I, yeah. I'm not the person who built it, but there was this like sort of perforated hose running above where I was sitting, and and it would like they turn it on and water would flow through it. But you know the take that we used was like the fifth take or something that we'd done, so it was like still like a couple dr like droplets from like a previous take. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you picked up on that because I I saw that funny. It made it actually kind of perfect because it, it, it was a precursor to what was going to happen afterwards. And just as I was figuring it out, I was like, oh, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I liked it. All right. So um, out of all the productions you've done recently, and especially the ones that I loved, uh, including Ash's uh, More of the Story, J.P. Sachs, Julia Michaels of The World Was Ending, I find that there's a common thread um, between these songs. 
I guess the adjectives is uh, are somber, poignant, forlorn. Now, would you agree that that's the kind of the kind of music you like to produce, or you end up producing? Did you choose these like, songs? The thing I always go for is like honest. Like I really want to make people's record that feels like like oh, this is really how this person feels. I think sometimes it's like very easy to write a song that's just like a cool, catchy kind of like you know, I'm I'm going out tonight, like sort of pop song and I, I'd, I'm, I'd much rather know how the person is actually feeling and so I feel like Dory, Lose You Love Me If the World Was in, those are very honest songs so those are the ones that I'm always drawn to and really like you're very good at that you're you're a very good producer Thanks. to start um, but at the same time I find that even knowing your prowess knowing your skill set you like to go quite minimalistic and bring out the vocalists and I love that part about your production Thanks. I mean, I think that's like the best thing you can do as a producer is like get out of the way of a great singer. You know, um, like me, a song is like nothing without a great vocal performance. And mm -hmm. if the person gives a great vocal performance, and I, I'm very lucky, I work with great vocalists like Billy and um, you know the people we just mentioned, Julia Michaels, Ash, J.P. Sachs, uh, Camila Cabello, Tovlo. Like they all have voices I adore, and so it's like you know why would i then put a bunch of stuff in the way of yeah. their beautiful voice you know? yeah. but then again okay speaking some of these interesting stuff um you like to use a lot of sounds from daily lives uh the ones that i know of are for example billy talked about a dental drill um you yeah. talked about bad guys pedestrian crossings in um australia uh, what are yeah. some of the weirdest sounds that we haven't heard about that you've used that's a good question. Um, let me try to think what I've been using lately. Um, I think one of the things that I I got worried about was like I felt like using sound sounds, like using like a lighter and a, and water, like raindrops and stuff. I felt like it was like sort of becoming like a little bit of like a gimmick. Yeah. Like I was like I was sort of known for that and so I was a little worried that I would just like do it to a point where people were like yeah that's like all he does so I think for a while now I've been like trying to like do less of that just because I want it to be special always like I don't want to be like oh he he always does like found sounds so there's like there's a couple here and there but I am like sort of pointedly like how can okay. I make sure that you know there's like the, Billy, Billy's dog barks on um maybe my future i'm not even sure which one but but yeah there's like a dog bark okay that's that's interesting i've heard you know writers not wanting to write themselves into a box i never heard producers not wanting to produce themselves into a type uh but you're always working on the next project and uh, I have been listening to your podcast by the way uh, we bought a house I think that's what it's called with uh, Claudia yeah that's awesome thanks uh, man yeah uh, latest episode two year anniversary so congratulations thank you I appreciate it two years I mean if you go back two years in time especially in my life everything everything in the world was like different and, and my life was completely different so I feel very lucky to have uh, experienced these last two years with Claudia. Yeah, and uh, now that we're spending so much time with each other indoors in very close spaces, uh, I'm glad to hear that you guys are actually doing better uh, even uh, than yeah. you know when you were keeping a distance because for a lot of yeah. people that's uh, the opposite. Um, at the very end, Phineas, I have a, a quick a, a series of quick fire questions and uh, it's just five, six of them. Um, the first one is kind of inspired from the podcast. So would you want to upload your brain into a super machine? Yes. <laughs> I figured you'd say that. Uh, what is your go-to party song? Ooh, my go-to party song, TikTok by Kesha. Nice one. Okay. Uh, the last book you read? Oh, um, I'm currently reading a book called Person of Interest. It's a Edward Snowden's autobiography. It's really good. And then the book I read before that was, uh, did you ever see the movie Frank about like the musician that wears like a big mach like paper mache head yeah i'm trying to remember so, his name um really good looking for, british guy so that that anyway that's like all basically a true story frank sidebottom i think is his name anyway he's but it's like a true story and so I'm, i read the, the book about like the true story of that okay that's was really good um what's what is your all-time favorite movie 
Ferris Bueller's Day Off or The Social Network? That's uh, oh, Social Network was. Uh, re- have you seen Social Dilemma uh, recently? Yeah, saw that. It was really good. That was a really good one too. Uh, favorite cocktail? Oh man, you know what? I am like such a like. I've been out to, to, to bars so infrequently that what I usually do is like someone that I'm out with order something that I haven't heard of. And I'm just like, I'll, I will also try that. Like, That's- I'll just try. I don't have like a, I'm not like a, oh, I always get a Mai Tai or an old fashioned or something. Although I like Mai Tais and old fashioned. But <laughs> I, usually, I usually just get whatever someone else is getting. No, it's good to be adventurous. Okay, last question. I think I already know the answer to this one, but your favorite animal Wow, I like that you already know the answer because I feel like I don't. Oh. Um, I, I mean, I love my I love my dog Peaches. What, what I, were you gonna say? Were you, were you gonna say? I was gonna say Peaches. I mean, if she's not, around, not, you can't let her hear your. It's anybody else, no, right? Yeah, else, exactly. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I this has no connection at all. But uh, my dog, which is who is sitting right there, his name is Billy, and uh, oh, I find sweet. it funny. Yeah. Find it funny that I'm talking to you today. I wish I could show him to you, but he's uh, he's not feeling to the weather today. Um, so, Phineas, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, could you say goodbye to your fans here in Asia? Asia Pop 40, thank you so much for listening to this interview. And uh, I hope I get to see you all in person whenever that's possible. I'm not going to hold you up anymore because I'm sure you have a series of interviews. So have a good day. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, it's Phineas, and you're listening to Asia Pop 40. Asia Pop 40.